Hi and welcome back, you're with Terry from Bonsai Tree. I was recently paging through a book by Sibiru Ricardo. I came upon a planting which he did, a root on rock, which really appealed to me. Using this image as inspiration, this will be the subject or the theme of today's video. If you find the following content helpful, then you can thank me by clicking the thanks button just below the video. Given that it is a root on rock planting, of course the most important thing that you're going to need is a very interesting stone. Funny enough, I think I collected this stone about 15 years ago and have always wanted to do something like this with it. Something else which might be slightly more difficult to get is the display tray. So this is not how the tree or the planting will be cultivated, but really just for display. As the theme of my planting is going to be a stone emerging from a sea, I love the blue glaze on the ceramic because I think it will help to complete the image. This Japanese black pine which I grew from seed in a Niagari style is going to be just perfect for what I have in mind. I also grew this pyracantha from seed and then uh, treated it as a cutting and then field grew it for a few seasons and this is going to add an element of seasonality to the planting. Long fibered sphagnum moss together with peat is going to form the basis of our soil mix. I've also kept the dust from Akadama and this is going to form an important component in this mix. You're also going to need a lot more moss than you think you might and I would suggest or encourage you to get mosses of short and long fibers. Because the stone that I had collected was so interesting, it actually offered me multiple opportunities for creating a planting on and the difficulty was really deciding which one to actually use. It will definitely make things easier if you're able to use the crevices and indentations in the stone as you'll be able to place growing media into them. This position of the stone was a very strong contender as it would allow me to place a large amount of growing media in this big indent or this hollow and I liked the movement of the stone. I think if one was going for a seaside windswept type of look, then this angle would have been perfect. This angle also really appealed to me. I love the negative space below the rock itself. I could suggest water flowing through beneath it and how it has hollowed the stone. And obviously there are various uh, positions that plants could be placed. Ultimately, I decided on this as the angle for the stone. I felt that this best showed off the stone and also gave me a vertical height which, I, which appealed to me. Although the stone was fairly stable in that position, I did need to grind down some points that were not making proper contact with the surface. I'm now going to mix together some quickset putty. The putty is then applied to the stone in strategic positions. Copper wire loops then are inserted into the putty. As it's through these eyelets that you're going to place the tie-down wires which will secure your trees to the rock, it's important that you place them, as I said, strategically around the stone in order for you to be able to hold the trees firmly onto the stone. Next, I'm going to mix up my muck. The muck will comprise of equal parts of long-fibered sphagnum moss as well as the peat and then the akadama dust. First, thoroughly blend the moss and the peat. Once properly mixed, then add the Akadama dust and mix again. The texture that you're looking for is one that is spongy but also sticky. So you're going to need to add some water, but my advice would be that you add only small amounts of water at a time. Once thoroughly mixed and sticky, your muck is now complete. With everything prepared, I can now move on to the trees. I'm firstly going to remove the sacrifice branch that was used to thicken up the trunk. Using a repotting sickle, I'm going to loosen the tree in the container. Before I can remove the tree from the container, I need to cut the wires that are keeping it in. With the tree now free, I can lift it out. Coincidentally, the white growth that you see on the roots is mycorrhiza and is always a good thing or a good sign when you're repotting pines. As I want to expose more of these roots, I'm going to take a fair amount of the growing media off the top of the soil level. While working the tree, I noticed that these very strong roots are directly opposite one another and in a straight line, essentially, and so I decided to remove the lower one. To fit the space on the rock, I also needed to reduce the size of the root ball. It's a good idea to test fit the tree, 
so that you have a better idea of where you need to place the majority of your muck and also with how the wires are going to be laid out. You can use aluminium wire or copper wire, whichever you prefer. Just don't use galvanized wire or some other kind of steel wire which can rust. Take your prepared muck and place it on the stone. Once again, test fit your tree on the stone and if necessary, you can add more muck to certain areas to change the angle. Secure the tree with the wires that you've prepared for that purpose and once again check the planting angle. Add more muck between the roots as well as to cover them. With the pine now firmly attached, I'm now going to prepare the pyracantha. It was necessary to play around with the angles because the idea is of course to show the tree off when it is in berry from the front of the planting. Once again I prepared this cavity with more muck and also decided to add muck to join the top and lower parts of the planting together. The pyracantha was then also securely fastened into position. Before adding moss, I decided to check the angles and positions of the most important elements. I then lightly misted the planting. As I mentioned earlier, it's a good idea in preparation for doing this planting that you collect the moss from sources such as bonsai trees that are growing in a condition or an environment that is similar to where this root on rock planting will be placed. It's also advisable not to use too large sheets of moss to cover the muck, but rather to use smaller pieces and also to vary the types of moss that you use. Once thoroughly attached to the muck, the moss performs a very important function in this root on rock planting as it will retain moisture in the soil. Prepare your moss before you apply it by reducing the amount of soil on the reverse side as well as getting rid of any stones or other large particles. I like to use the spatula side of a rake combination tool to help to apply the moss and also to shape it as small mounds. If you find that moss on the vertical sides of your planting tends to fall off, you can attach it in place by making small wire staples. To add a little bit more interest, I managed to find some hardy ferns which I added to the planting. The one fern prefers a little bit more shade and so I planted it under the overhang of the rock. If you found that content helpful and you'd like to thank me for it, please do so now by clicking the thanks button just below the video. The planting is now completed and I must say that I'm extremely proud and happy with the way that it turned out. It's of course not a copy of Master Siberocato's masterpiece that I saw in the book, but it was inspirational to me. Once the planting has become more established, I'll add some wire to the pine and bring the first branch to the right down in a cascading style. The planting will now be placed in a shaded environment, 40% shade to be precise, and it'll be misted fairly often to keep the moss moist and allow it an opportunity to take root properly. It will then be moved progressively into more sun, although it will never probably be placed in full sun. The peat that I used actually has added fertilizer to it, however in no time that will most likely be depleted and the form of fertilizer that will predominantly be used will be a liquid fertilizer which will be sprayed onto the planting on a fairly regular basis throughout the growing season. In case you've been wondering, the pyracantha has red berries and I think that's going to make for a very interesting seasonal change and in contrast to the evergreen of the pine. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope that it inspires you to create your own root on rock planting. Till next time, take care and goodbye.